Hello plant friends, Leanne in Adelaide. Welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. And today I'm doing a tour of the backyard. My garden is a tropical style garden but we're in a Mediterranean climate. One, two, three. Leanne in Adelaide. Before I go out there, hit the subscribe button, notification bell and see you soon out in the back garden. So we'll start off the garden tour by doing a bit of a, a pan back so you can see um, some detail from a bit of a distance. It is a tiny garden and some of the tour will be in the garden so you won't get a sense of what's around it. So you can see that we've got sort of a perimeter of tall plants around. We have houses on either side that helps to block out those houses and the houses are all higher up than us. We're down lower. There is a house behind there, but you can hardly see that one. It's hidden by the bamboo. So now I'm standing under the alfresco so you can see the other part of the garden. There's the water feature there. And got surrounded by some roses in the cradle. And as I've panned around, you've probably seen some potted plants. Uh, they'll be subject of uh, another video, so just focusing on the actual garden that plants itself for this one. Let's start around near the water feature. Um, this creates a lovely sound. We've got fairly um, heavy traffic noise because we're on the main road. And this helps to just create a nice ambience here. In front of the water feature, we've got Moses in the cradle or Roia, uh, the botanical name, and they have spread quite a bit. And I'm trying to just create a sort of a gentle um, line curve away from the water feature on either side, so they're looking fairly dense now, so it's created the effect I, I really wanted, which is really nice. I've got a few new plants as well, I'll show you those in a moment. I've got not what I call normal elephant ears, uh, alocasia, and they've started with just a few plants. Over here is the original plant that came from the balcony, the large plant that we transformed from the balcony down the stairs into the garden and that ended up being quite a, a funny video unintentionally. Um, that is my first garden project. You can go and have a look at that video. I'll put a card in there for you to see that one. And the various other alocasias from that pup set produced. Now the Pride and Joy, which will be later on, but I'll just sneak around and show you now. These rather unassuming little plants here. So we've got two plants there, there and then behind. And another one is popped over behind the water feature. They're actually giant alocasias I ordered online and received them not long ago, about three or four weeks ago. Um, they are um, probably slightly more tropical oriented, but they are apparently very good at um, growing in cold weather. So um, here is a can of Stuttgart, and that was transplanted from a sunnier area of the garden. And there's another one here. That's just settled in in the last uh, month or so. So looking forward to that. Um, poor old stem's not quite strong enough to hold up the leaves but I'll prop it up if it needs to be but I'd like to try and make it work its way and, uh, I've got a majestic palm heat down here that got really badly damaged in uh, our heat wave that we had about a year or so ago and where we had about 45 degrees and a lot of plants got really badly burnt some of them you know, it took ages to recover and this one's still recovering. You can see some new growth coming up in the middle which pleases me knowing. So just in there you can see that. Got some Dracaenas here and um, there's two types. The one's called, a common name I think is Song of India and that is often seen as a house plant. Um, it's not doing too badly, a little bit burnt, but you'd expect that if it's normally used to light, lower light conditions. And then got a few spikes here. Chinese fan palm. 
that handles cold weather quite well so it's looking quite happy we're waiting for it to get a nice trunk it's not really doing much of that at the moment as you can see but eventually that will get quite tall i think they grow like 10 5 10 minutes tall but that's growing quite slowly but looking quite healthy now this is a golden cane palm here they grow really well in queensland which is a subtropical and tropical area in australia down here they still grow okay they don't grow as fast and you get some browning from you know lack of humidity that sort of thing and the really hot weather they struggle a bit but otherwise not too bad so we'll wander through here's another type of Arthamere this is actually my favorite the lime green colored one I think that's really pretty and in this uh, relatively low light at the moment it's not showing up at how lime green it really is but that looks fantastic um, with a little bit of sunlight behind it I like the contrast of the the dark and the lime green together and that's what I, what I wanted to create throughout the garden I've got lots of cannons in the garden not many in flower but they give a bit of nice leaf anyhow this one here is the bird of paradise uh, Strelitzia reginiae which is the large one uh, they get really large leaves um, they don't have the nice orange flowers that the smaller bird of paradise has it's more of a muted um, color kind of a, a cream color but i'm growing this for the foliage more than anything and it creates kind of a fan palm effect down here got another one of the golden cane palms there's three of those uh, four of those in the yard and you can see that morning sun's already getting to it also planted quite a few bangalow palms in previous videos the palms would have been a lot smaller now they're going around my height and eventually we'll get a little bit of a canopy which will look really great um, so there's a clump of them here I planted about three or four together I can't even remember how many there were now and as you can see some of those are getting fairly tall and I've got three that I planted earlier about a year before these I'll come over so I can give you an idea of the size of the other ones so a little bit of sun coming in there I'll pan back and give you a better view but they, they're doing a really good job so eventually the other three will be as big all right so this area here got canna lilies got one in flower over here which is a but the, it's not able to hold up the weight of its flower that's actually Cleopatra the Cleopatra is a lovely one it's got um, random colors on its leaves uh, spots and stripes um, and just blotches and so on and even the leaves have random coloration with um, like dark kind of um, almost burgundy brown type stripes there that's a variegated ginger in, a, in amongst it got another canna lily here just one little flower on it at the moment that's a tangerine color here I've got tiger grass that's the only one left and um, we got rid of the rest of the tiger grass because it was looking really poorly and we're still um, trying to address the issue of very high alkaline soil here and that yellowing is basically as a result of the alkaline soil I've given it um, two weeks ago I gave it some liquid sulfur to try and increase the acid levels in the soil so that it was, became more neutral um, these canners here are a bird magnet we've had two uh, honey eaters on that taller one there this morning and they with their weight uh, as they rest on it to try and eat the nectar basically um, it can't hold it up so it ends up bending over like that but I actually really like the effect of that I think that's a really nice effect 
and I've got some in the pot there that's a different color red though so the top one there is a slightly orangey red that's a marine eagle and I can't recall the name of this one if I can find it I'll pop it in the description uh, right let's move through here there's another golden cane palm you can see plenty of the ground cover here there and everywhere off mares oh, I'll just show you these because I think they're cute little hanging sloth so that's the string of dolphins cutting that I just put in there quite recently and and next to it I've got another one and that little sloth which was planted out quite a while back with some cuttings is a string of beans that's going really well look at that so not far not long before it will get to the ground then I'll just cut cut pieces off and um, make more cuttings out of it and more cannoli leaf so quite a few of these have finished flowering. Our, our yard doesn't get a huge amount of sun, so we don't get a massive number of flowers. We used to years ago, in the early days of being in the garden, but you know, that's the trade-off. You get more privacy with, just panning back, I'll show you what I mean. We've got tall bamboo, and it's planted around the sides as well. So that, Plus this here, which is the lily police, which is an Australian native. There's three of those. You can see the foliage going up there. So all of that creates more shade. So that's the trade-off, but I'm quite happy with that. And this is the last of the golden cane palms here. So that's looking really healthy. It gets a little bit less sun. It seems to enjoy that. And the Bangalow palms that I'm talking about earlier, that are bigger, there are three of those planted alongside there. So you can see they're getting quite tall now. Um, so for, I've done pretty well for Adelaide because Adelaide's not ideal for growing those sort of plants, but they're probably three years old now and they're, they're probably three metres tall, um, roughly. So that's not too bad from a small plant. Down here, this is one of our projects um, so where I took a video of John trying to drill holes in the bird bath. We planted it, I planted it out with some string of beans and that's growing really well. So that, that's come up really filling up nicely. And then I just put an aeonium in the centre and I collect shells from the beach and then throw them in there. And here, there and everywhere, I've got random stuff like every now and then there's a bit of a patch and I'll go, okay, I'll fill it up with something rather than have it blank. So I've got some succulents, that sort of thing. And you can see I've got a little succulent garden at the end there. They're all just cuttings I've thrown in there, but pretty much all of them have taken. So it's a good way to fill up a bit of a space. And I think the glossy leaves on the aeonians look kind of tropical anyhow. Here's some more random plants in the garden. That large succulent there, that's a Echeveria imbricata. Now it looks completely different to the Echeveria imbricata when it has really tough sunny conditions and dry, dry conditions. Over here, Coleus, and behind that, a Croton. I'll move in a bit closer so you can see it. Now, Crotons don't grow well in Adelaide. So this is in a pot. As soon as it gets much colder than it is now, it'll be coming inside. That one's pretty poorly. Uh, I left it outside for a long time last year, but I might just use it to make some cuttings and we'll just go from there. Right, so let's go back to where we started from, over to the water feature. So thank you for staying through to the end of my video. I spend most of my time behind the camera 
you saw my very awkward attempts at providing an introduction at the start. I love it when people enjoy looking at plants and enjoy gardening like I do. I'm just happy for people to see my videos and see the, the plants and enjoy the fruits of my labour. So goodbye from Leanne in Adelaide. Thanks for watching. Bye.